two, three. I fell into the bottle, washed up on the shore of his private island. He was waiting at the door. Little girl, you need something to believe in. Little girl, here's what I know. Higher you go, hotter, 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 hotter. Let's go and do this. Yeah. Chrissy Amphlett is on her way to hospital for a controversial new treatment. Multiple sclerosis has ravaged her body since symptoms first appeared 14 years ago. Where I think it began, when I was doing The Boy From Oz, when I would hit that last note of Judy Garland, <laughs> My leg would start to shake, and I just thought it was nerves. Had a few hours sleep. It wasn't until about 2005, I was walking along the street, I was walking along 19th Street. It was very hot, and I couldn't walk. All, all of a sudden, my body shut down, and I couldn't... I had a lot of trouble putting one leg in front of the other. Sometimes you get pretty down. Sometimes you think, well, it's better off me being dead than going through this. I mean, it really gets you down. I think there's a really high suicide rate with people with MS, right? Because you just get sick of it. Two decades since her diagnosis, this is daily life for Vicky Costa. At 20, she started getting blurred vision and tingling down one leg. When you had the diagnosis, were you relieved to have a diagnosis or were you devastated? No, devastated. Devastated. Yeah. The worst thing I've ever heard in my life. I last walked when I was 30, which is uh, almost 12 years ago. If you had to explain to somebody who doesn't have MS what the worst parts about MS are, what would you tell them? Not having any hope for a cure. But here in Italy, there is a new hope. I've come to meet Dr Paolo Zamboni, a vascular surgeon. In 2008, he devised a radical treatment after his wife Elena was struck down by MS. Paolo Zamboni wasn't prepared to just accept his wife's diagnosis of MS or her seemingly hopeless future. Instead, he applied his scientific training and experience to finding out all he could about one of life's most baffling diseases. A disease like this in families is very heavy. You can see the blockage right there. Yes, exactly here. Dr Zamboni discovered most patients with MS had blockages in the veins in their neck. His theory was that because the blood was not circulating properly, deposits of iron were building up in the brain, becoming toxic and attacking the nerves. His method is to unblock the veins using a tiny balloon threaded up via a vein in the groin. His first patient was his wife. The results were incredible. It brings a big smile to your face. Oh, yes. <laughs> Other patients like these followed. Every one has found improvement. For me, it's uh, very difficult to, to walk. Now I dance and uh, it's fantastic. I have a heart full of uh, happiness. But the blocked vein theory contradicts everything the medical establishment believes. Most neurologists dismiss Zamboni's apparent success as mere placebo. Patients just think they're getting better. 
The treatment's so new, there haven't been large clinical trials to back up his view. As a scientist, I need of a study capable to prove uh, this. And if the studies bear out what you found so far, how much of a difference could it make to millions of people around the world? It will change uh, the quality of life to millions of people. You know, things are possible, you know. I believe. I'm, a, I'm an optimist. Patients like Chrissy Amphlett aren't willing to wait. There's been something I've wanted to do oh, for over a year now. I wake up in the morning and everything hurts, everything. And sometimes it feels like I have a, a python that's wrapping around my body and squeezing my body. It's, it's the weirdest. Sometimes I feel like a, a big shark is biting me on my shoulder. They say that I, I will be in a wheelchair in four years. Unblocking the vein seems not only to alleviate the symptoms of MS, but to stave off further damage. Do you want a hand? Yeah, I'll just take your arm. We'll go down this way, it'll be okay. easier. Yeah. Chrissy will be awake throughout the three-hour procedure. I'm very excited to know that I feel that I'm going to get some symptomatic relief from this. She's hoping for a result, like Kerry Cassidy. All right, how much have we got? A Melbourne accountant and mum. This is home video of the spasms Kerry suffered before hearing of Dr Zamboni's blocked vein theory. When um, it was explained that people have had blocked jugular veins, I actually went, wow, that's amazing because I've, I have this stiff neck and I get pain in here. And I thought, you start, you know, I kind of was second guessing, I didn't want to get really excited and go, oh yeah, this is it. And, but I thought, hey, that actually makes sense to me. On the 11th of March, 2010, Kerry took a chance. She was the second Australian to try the operation. The next day I got out of bed and opened the curtains and I went, oh, I almost need, I was, I was saying to the kids, look outside, it's so blue, look at the trees. Oh my God, everything was so clear. And I, I was just sitting in the room just going, is this me? Is, it, is this because I want to see this? Right? I didn't realise how much my vision had been affected by the MS. I've just walked out of the operation. It was a really great experience and I know it sounds weird. I'm a bit knocked out, I'm a bit blown away from what's happened. I've had um, cameras up inside me, um, I've had um, veins opened that were stenosed. I had, I've got the biggest jugular vein he's ever seen. There is, as yet, no scientific proof of Dr Zamboni's theory. For sufferers like Vicky, it's too late. As the disease progresses, the damage cannot be reversed. <laughs> Everyone have a go of the punching bag. Don't let go of it, Dom. <laughs> Her old self is just a distant memory. Oh, look, I'm not holding. Does that surprise you? Yeah, I, th I, I feel like telling her, hold on, you're going to fall. I haven't taken time to play these, so, yeah, it's been a while. Um, yeah, I wanted to protect her, not to fall. And it's me, so, yeah, it's weird. Mm. I have suppressed a lot. I've been uh, too busy, uh, too busy being strong. Good evening. So how are you feeling now compared to how you felt before you had the treatment? Well, it's eight weeks now and I have got my motivation back. I don't have the fritzed nervous feeling running through my body. 
Um, I am now walking eight blocks, whereas before I was walking one block. But I just am really starting to feel like I can look into the future again and have a life and I can possibly have a, a job. And on a night not long ago, Chrissy took to the stage with Cold Chisel, performing again. I feel very grateful because I think I took my body for granted before, but all of a sudden it's been like, I don't think I'm going to be in a wheelchair in three or four years. I know I'm not. Said to me, I'd already lost my boy. Over and over and over, over I struggled with my choice. I'm still getting stronger all the time. But like I've got weight on now. Yeah, you've put on weight. Your, your face has filled out a bit. You yeah, look healthy. Yeah, good. Yeah, I sexy have an again. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I knew that would make you happy. Yes. <laughs> Little girl. I think we got it. I think we did. I think we did. Nice work.